this is the house of bread and praise, the place of balance and abundance, where we believe Jesus feeds us and we give him praise for it. Kedaniah.
Hallelujah. 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 We ask everyone to please stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We welcome our virtual audience on this morning. We welcome you to 83 Bethlehem, Judah. Amen. We welcome the spirit of the Lord that's in this place. We're grateful for the spirit of the Lord that's in this place. Amen. We thank God for the first Sunday in May. Amen. We thank God for how the Lord is blessing us. Amen. We're going to approach the throne of grace. Most gracious God, our Father. We come before you as humble as we know how, oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. God, we come before you telling you thank you, oh God. We come before you telling you thank you, oh God, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your kindness, oh God. Have thine own way in this place, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Bless our the man servant, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen your man servant on today, God. Strengthen our pastor, oh God. Bless our praise and worship, oh God. Bless in this place, oh God. Have your way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You do what you want to do, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Move how you want to move, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for life, oh God. We thank you for health and strength, oh God. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, oh God. We thank you for jobs, oh God. We thank you for homes, oh God. But most of all, we thank you for being saved, sanctified, and delivered, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for this place of worship, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Touch us, oh God. Move like you want to move, oh God. Do what you want to do, oh God. God, we thank you for what's getting ready to be done in this place, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the shift in this place, oh God. We thank you for the glory that rests in this place, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for you reside in this place, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Bless the ones that are on their way, oh God. Get them here safely, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the ones that are here, oh God. Bless our musicians, oh God. Bless in this place like never before, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound, sound of the trumpet, trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the psaltery and heart. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the hot, loud sounding cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. everybody. All right, we're going to get into our set this morning. Did y'all come to praise the Lord today? Yes? All right. I hope y'all got a good night's rest. I hope your week was kind to you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and YouTube all across the world. Welcome to our worship
Hallelujah. All right, we ain't going to stop. We're going to slow down, but we're not going to stop praising him. Hallelujah. Has he been good to you? Has he been everything to you? Hallelujah. This is a simple song. You all know this. It's everything, you're everything to me. Now, whatever he has been to you, get it on your mind, get it on your heart. And pour out to him this morning. Now, we sang this song a couple of weeks ago. And I couldn't stop singing it, so we're going to do it one more time. We're going to keep praising the Lord. Wherever you have been with him this week, come on and lay it at his feet. Come on and think of all the ways that he's made. How many times he's brought you out. How many times he's just been a friend. All right, can y'all sing this with me? Everything to me. 
Come on, lift your hands if he is everything to you. The scripture decrees and declares it is in him we live and move. And we have all of our being. In him I'm everything and without him I'm absolutely nothing. Come on, help me say you're everything to me. Everything to me. Come on, minister to the Lord this morning as he ministers to you. Everything to me. Everything to me. Without God, I can do nothing. Without Him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Oh, without God, I can do nothing. It's old song. Without him. I would fail. Come on, if he's everything, you ought to be able to say it. Without him, my life would be drifted like a ship, like a ship. Without, without a sail, a sail. If you know without God, you would be like a ship without a sail, carried by everything going on in this world. Come on, with the clapping of your hands and the opening of your mouth, come on, give him your best right here and right there. Oh, I don't hear you this morning. Come on, I need to hear you. He is our rock. He is our shield. He's our hiding place. It is in him I live and move and I have all of my being. Come on, let's have a 30 second testimony service. Wave at a neighbor and say good morning. Tell your neighbor it's really good to see you. 
but I need to let you know something I survived another week tell them another one goes down in the book called survival is there anybody here this morning that pressed your way to the house of God with the determination that if I can get in the house I'm going to lift my hand and give him glory I'm going to lift my voice and give him the fruit of my lips hallelujah glory to God oh you ought to tell somebody I've been through some stuff this week that God had to hide me tell them God had to hide me but I'm so glad that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. You ought to put a covering over your head and say, he hid me this week. He hid me from my enemy and he hid me from my foe. Hey! My, 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 my. I got to leave that alone, but when my enemy and my foe came upon me to eat of my flesh, Oh, you may be seated. I'm sorry I'm late running up kind of morning, but you may be seated. Woo! Well, I don't want to get it twisted. I was talking about the enemy and my foe, but I didn't come to exalt them today. I came to exalt my God. You ought to put it down your row. It's all about our God. Come on, find somebody to talk to you and say it's all about our God. Tell him he's great and mighty, strong in battle, and he deserves all of my praise. I said he deserves all my praise. Let everything, I'm gonna leave it alone, but let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. What does it mean to praise? Speak well of him. Give him some compliments. Tell him how great he is. Tell him how strong he is. Tell him how much you love him. And then tell him how much you need him. If you're watching us at home, you ought to put something in the comment box to let us know you're with us today and you came to praise us. Well, be seated. God bless you. It is with kingdom joy that I greet you. Hey, don't holler like that. My, 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 my. God bless you. It is with kingdom joy that I greet you in the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Son of the living God. As I walked in and I heard them saying, he's everything. Oh, everything to me. Y'all don't hear me here. I wish I had the old church with me. I say I wish I had the old church with me. Because they would say it a little different. But they would just say he's everything to me. He's my mother, my father, my sister, and my brother. He's everything to me. 
I ain't gonna bother the new age folk. But when my mother and my father has forsaken me, then the Lord will lift me up. What a joy it is this morning to be in the house of God and to have another day that we can decree and declare victory over sin, shame, victory over the devil. I came this morning to magnify the name of our God. I said I came to give him praise. I came to express myself to him. So at any minute, I'm liable to jump up and start going radical in my praise. Because praise is therapeutic for me. I ain't got nobody else to talk back to me. When I don't know what else to do, I just lift my hand and say thank you. When I don't know what else to do, I just lift my hand and say I trust you. Okay, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. But I have come to the place to realize, hallelujah, that my praise is an act of faith. Because I could sit in a corner and worry and stress. But when I'm able to lift my hand, I'm telling God, you got this one. Anybody got something going on in your world right now? I'm not talking about what you went through last week. I'm talking about a right now moment. But you can open up your mouth and just say, God, you got this one. Uh -huh. and so today, we put our trust in him. For he is the God of our salvation, ruler of the nation. We want to welcome our guest today. Would you clap your hands for our guest? Hey, Shama. We appreciate you making a decision. Thank you, Father, to be with us today in our experience. Hallelujah. We don't want to, my mind, we don't want to scare you or make you uncomfortable. But you are at the house of bread and praise. God gives us bread and we give him praise. Because we realize, hallelujah, that it was nobody but him that brought us through. Welcome to our virtual audience. Hit that share button while we praising. Because truly sharing is caring. So if you care about anybody, hit that share button so that they can have this experience. Just wave at a neighbor and say, don't be selfish. Now tell another neighbor, don't be selfish. Somebody on this road might need your praise. They might need your strength. They might can't do it for themselves. Don't be selfish. They might need you to help them get somewhere in God. There are about 20 folk that know he's worth. Go ahead and give him go. Clap your hands. Open your mouth and praise the Lord. Oh! 20 seconds. I dare you to glorify. The honor and oh. Come on, if you're gonna praise and praise it, if you're gonna praise and praise it. Don't let the moment pass you by. If you gon' praise it, then praise it. If you gon' praise it, then praise it.
put your hand on your neighbor's back and say, I want to decree in your life because you praise him anyhow. Everything is all right now. That neighbor didn't connect. Find you another neighbor that would connect and say, oh neighbor, I want to tell you one thing because you praise him anyhow. I just want you to know everything is all right now. somebody he's all right with me tell somebody what you know about him just tell him he's all right God bless you God bless you God keep you I need about 10 intercessors to just shift right there and go right into intercession and seal what God is doing right now with prayer that the enemy will not be able to come in and snatch your miracle. Tell somebody I'm praying right now that the enemy cannot come in and steal what God is doing for you right now. So we grab the horns of the altar and we intercede in prayer. Yes, Lord. 
we travail in prayer that God whatever you're doing for your people that the enemy cannot steal it you're working miracles you're healing bodies you're answering prayers you're opening doors my 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 Sometimes you have to tell of the goodness of the Lord. We're moving quickly. But I am appreciative for God and what he is doing in our midst. We have been praying for Elder Lake. And I saw on his Facebook posting that God had gave him a miracle. So we celebrate uh, you today, Elder Lake. That God has reversed the dialysis. No more dialysis. Hallelujah. He's a miracle working God. You ought to tell somebody, I speak a reversal in your life right now. No more curse but bless. No more down but up. No more broken but whole. I speak a reversal. You ought to tell somebody I'm a hanging there until I get my testimony. Because I'm going to be able to tell you what God did for me in a few days. There's going to be a reversal in your situation. Sister, Sister Mars, we stand in agreement with you. It's going to be a reversal. I speak it as the servant of the Lord. Reverse it, God. Hell yeah, my, my shot. Reverse it. We that bear your name ask you. In Jesus' name. Reverse it. confident that he which has begun a good work in me shall perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Truly the presence of the Lord is with us today. We are celebrating the first Sunday, I believe. I'm, is, that, is this the first Sunday? We are celebrating the first Sunday in the month of May. And we want to decree on this fifth month that the month of May shall be a month of grace. Unmerited favor. Just put it in the air and just say grace favor to accomplish things that I don't have the strength to do. Unmerited. Stuff that's about to come my way I'm not even worthy of. Unmerited. Favor. Five being the number of grace. 
So I look for the grace of the Lord. I look for Mayflowers spiritually. The saying is April showers make Mayflowers. So whatever rain I had to go through last month, I'm looking for the production of beauty this month. Can Pastor just encourage you and let you know something beautiful is on track for you. And if you just hold on and hang in there, you're going to see God move in a mighty way. Yeah, David had how many stones when he faced Goliath? The Bible said he grabbed him five smooth stones. Because he knew he only need used one now. But when you study the text, you find out Goliath had some brothers. Oh, he said, let me get some in case his brothers want some. I'm going to knock out Goliath. And in case his brothers want to fight, I want him to know. I got the four stones for the four brothers. Y'all ain't hearing me here. And that same grace moved over to Ephesians chapter 4 and he gave some and there we see the five-fold ministry of the church today the apostle y'all don't hear me here the pastor the evangelist y'all don't hear me here the prophet the pastor and the teacher uh, all comes in working under this grace of God and even if you do not hold a title or an office of the fivefold, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have a place in the fivefold ministry. Y'all don't hear me here. We've all been called to the fivefold. We may not have an office of the fivefold, but we've all been called to the work of the fivefold. Why the Bible said, do the work of an evangelist. You ain't got to have a title, do the work. And that's what's wrong in the systematic component of church. We've been so hung up on our titles that we have abandoned the work of God. I ain't got nobody to help me. Because we are title driven, power hungry, power grabs. And folk will kill you and pull you all the way down just so they could think they can go up. But when God's got a plan for your life, he will make room for you to do what he has called you to do. I want to encourage you, my beloveds, as you prepare your giving this afternoon, Dr. Carla Cook and those that are working along with her and I encourage you to please stay and try to get this over in a little bit so you can hang out for a little while. Our Sam's House meet and greet is today after church in the gym. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, sometimes when you finish dancing, you need somebody to talk to. Amen. I know I can talk to Jesus, but sometimes I need to put my hand on somebody. Amen. And um, I may not get help, but I am a firm believer that it's all right to get help. See a therapist, a counselor. Y'all ain't helping me here. And let somebody talk you through the challenges of life. Of course, we encourage Christian ones, but if you can't find one, then whoever you listen to them, don't let them talk you to a place of not believing in God. Amen, somebody. I ain't no shame in my game. I, I've gone to a therapist a couple times, sat on the sofa with my anointed self. And listen to her talk me through some stuff. 
Life is a challenge. Pastoring y'all is a challenge. Amen. So they told me, Sister Jeanette, go do something to relieve your stress. And one day I went to the shooting range. My first time there, the man said, man, you got sniper tendencies. He said, you sure this your first time? He said, how you hitting that bulls out like that? I'm just thinking about some people. See, y'all too deep. Y'all too deep. Y'all too deep. But meet them. Amen. All jokes aside, I have in my family have had to live through people that have done much hurt to our family because we could not or did not get them help. Amen. And so I'm telling you, it's vital that we recognize this. And God has put people in our house. Amen. They didn't just pray. They've been to school. They have credentials. Y'all don't hear me here. They have license and they can help us. Why not take advantage of what God has given? So stop by this afternoon and do it. Pentecost Sunday, May 28th. And we're going to celebrate the Holy Ghost. And I want to get filled all over again. So we know what we do. Location and information will be shared with you. Invite everybody. 6.30 p.m. The 28th. I know it's Memorial Day weekend. Half of y'all ain't going out of town. Have your barbecue on Monday. And come to church Sunday night. I know y'all say, I like to have my cookout on Sunday so I can rest all day Monday. Well, not this time. Pastor telling you, I'm telling you, put your barbecue on Monday and come to church Sunday night. Amen. And uh, let's have church. We're going down in the water that night too. I know they're going to put me out. I'm going down in Jesus' name. I don't care what the world say about it. Amen. I'm going to take you to the water. And I'm going down. I might get baptized again myself. Some of you need a refilling and a refreshing. And you might need to get down in the water with us. Amen. Some of you got baptized and didn't know what you was doing. You just did it because the pastor told you it was time. Now you know what it means. Some of you. There's a link out on our social media and on the church app. Would you go to that QR code, and if you want to be baptized, would you please um, do that? Fill out that link so we can have an idea of how many people, amen, if you will need to be baptized. Uh, we've updated our membership link, and it's been sent out on Facebook and on our church app. And by the grace of God, we are transitioning our reach to you into a new format that will be updated and uh, we're getting to the place where the music will have their own place and if they have in choir rehearsal or changing something then they can send a text to all the choir members and the women can send a text to all the women, the men can send a text to all the men amen but we need all of your current information so that when we transition to a new system, you'll be able to do that. Uh, we're praying in this new system, you'll be able to have your own portal as a member. And you'll be able to go check on your own giving and where you are. And when you get ready to do your taxes, you won't have to wait on us to send you something in the mail. You can go and get your own information. And it'll be current 
So, but work with us. We're doing some amazing things. And it takes time. Amen. I say it takes time. But let's do that to the glory and the honor of God. It's, I'm sorry, deacons. I know I'm talking a long time. Y'all been on that wall for a minute. I'm coming. They probably are like, man, I thought this guy was going to take up the offering. And he's still talking. I'm coming. I'm coming. We are praying for our dear sister minister Regina and sister Helen, <laughs> our sister church mother, that's what she was, our assistant church mother, our beloved mother Rosanna Miles Davis has been called home to be with the Lord and as a church family we mourn with them that mourn, but we don't mourn like the folk in the world because we have a hope amen we have a hope I went to see mother April 24th and she was asking for me so I went up there in Lodi to see her and we talked and laughed and held hands and took pictures amen but I thank God she is no longer suffering in that trap of a body but she's in the presence of the Lord Mother still had her laugh. I, I took her a card, and uh, she already know if I brought a card. Like Mother Jackson say, not a billy goat. That means I don't eat paper. What's in the card? So she said, what bishop bring me? Say, do you want me? Helen asked if you want me to give this to Regina. Say, no, don't give it to Regina. He brought it to me. Give me my money. Y'all don't hear me. We are going to miss our beloved Mother Davis. Amen. So when the time comes to send her home, and she's already in the presence of the Lord, but we know what we do. We want to be strong and in full number. When Mother Davis was in her health, she was an avid supporter of this house. Amen. And so we must honor her contribution to this house. Pray for me. Amen. I hurt when everybody go, but there's some people, it just hits you a little different. Mother Davis is definitely one of those. You're preparing your tithe and your offerings dime of every dollar belongs unto the Lord, would you uh, pass that tithe toward the window if you need to give by credit card the trustee will be to my left, your right the giving apps will be shared with you in the pew you'll see a QR code if you scan that with your device it will take you right to the app virtual audience, would you share those of you that are tithing dime of every dollar please let's give it to the Lord for he is faithful to us I believe May 21st will be our youth service again so let's prepare to bring our children out we'll be together for praise and worship and then they will go into the gym BJ2 will happen. Bring all your young people. Encourage them to bring their friends as we continue to build this up. You're passing that offering all the way to the window. Our deacon and our deacon in training is coming down to receive those gifts. Receive those gifts by the grace and the mercy of God. We are a 100% tithing church. And we have done well. We have done well. And as we approach the summer, amen. Smile at your neighbor and say, don't take God's money on vacation. All right now, you see, you will curse with a curse. They're going to lose your luggage. You won't be able to find it. Y'all don't hear me. Let me stop. That's the way the old school did you. Know? Did I scared you half to death? Just, no, but for real, let's tithe unto the Lord. Let's do what we need to do. I think I've got everything. I think I've got everything. This amazing choir is going to come and share. 
Quite getting more appointments than I'm getting now. They all right. They going out singing more than I'm going out preaching. They got to go. They got to go sing this afternoon somewhere. They, amen. I'm glad to have a choir somebody want to hear. <laughs> Clap your hands one more time for this amazing choir that we'll be back to share the word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we clap our hands and give the Lord a great big hand of praise? Come on, we can do better than that. Can we lift the name of the Lord, everybody? Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one song real quick. We're going we're gonna to dedicate this song. Is that all right? We're going to send this song to Sister Regina. Amen. And her family. Is that all right? We're praying for her. Amen. Her and Sister Kayla. Amen. Kyla, which is one of Bishop's oldest God daughters we are praying with you and for you amen in the book of Matthew chapter 28 Jesus appears there and he teaches the disciples before they go out and he teaches them go out there amen don't forget one thing in verse 20 he says remember this lo I am with you all ways amen so sister Regina we want to encourage you today and let you know that he is with you all ways Amen. Simple song we're going to sing. It says, he's always there. Tap your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. Come on, tell him, I don't care what you're going through. Tell him, he's always there. Come on, tell him on the other side. I don't care what it is you're facing. Come on, tell him, he is always there. Come on, clap your hands for this choir. Lord. 
Would you celebrate the choir again, my God? Tell somebody he is always there. Matter of fact, say it like this, Jehovah Shema. Shema, Jehovah Shema means the God that is always present. And so he is always there. Turn with me this morning to the book of Galatians, chapter number one. I've got a few minutes to preach, and I'm not going to belabor it, but preferably we'll be able to do what the Lord has given us to do. The book of Galatians, chapter number one. And uh, let's start at verse 10 through verse number 16. If you have it, would you shout back to me, I have the word. Paul now talks to a group of people in a city called Galatia. And he says that I am now trying to win the approval of human beings, our God. Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by the revelation from Jesus Christ. Fool who have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism. Now intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy them. I was advancing in Judaism uh, beyond many of my own age and my people that was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Here's where I want to go. But when God who set me apart or who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult a human being. So far, the text. Would you just look at your neighbor and share a simple thought for about 25 minutes or so, preferably? Look at that neighbor and just say to the neighbor, the pleasure of separation. Come on, look at another neighbor and just say, the pleasure of separation. We've got Sister Dominique's grandmother with us. God bless you, Grandma. We love you. We love you. What an oxymoron to come at us today that God would talk to us and use to what we see conflicting words and bring them together. Pleasure, separation. Often the idea of being separated is the concept to be ripped or to be torn or to be removed. And the idea that often what God has to do in those seasons of life to pull us away from comfort zones is often he has to rip us out. That's the folk I want to connect with this morning that's willing to admit I didn't walk away. He had to kind of snatch me away. I found myself in places and the people that were comfortable. But that comfortable place and comfortable people was not in conjunction with the purpose of my life. So God, who had pleasure in separating me from my mother's womb, 
Now, I, I begin to argue the thought because it almost seemed like, Minister Michelle, that if he separated me from my mother's womb, then it becomes a conflicting statement to Jeremiah. Because I thought you said that before I was formed in my mother's womb that you called me. But now Paul says you separate me from the mother's womb. So is there a fight of the text saying that Jeremiah was called before and Paul was called at? But then the Holy Spirit began to talk to me as it often does. It says what you must understand uh, is that the call is from the foundation of the world. But the separation of the call does not come until you form what does that literally mean is that before time even begin God had thought of me and so the thought of me was in the mind of him even before my mother met my father he knew they would meet and he knew I would be and so then when I was he began the process of separation that he may fulfill the thought I'm sorry, I'm having a moment. So then when I begin to realize that everything that he pulls me from is not to hurt me, it's not to offend me, it's really just so that his thought of me can be fulfilled. Because the thought of what he has for my life cannot be executed if I yield myself simply to the flesh slant and so today I've come to preach to about 20 folk to tell you this is a season you're going to have to come out of yourself and you're going to have to come out of your feelings and you're going to have to come out of even your thought process and you're going to have to learn how to say God everything about me I yield to you I even yield my thought to you I yield my next step to you God I want to be so connected with you I I don't want to work where you don't want me to work. I don't want to live where you don't want me to live. Wait, y'all ain't ready. I don't even want the apartment you don't want me to have. I don't want the car you don't want me to have. And God knows I don't want the man or the woman you don't want me to have. I don't want to be at the church you don't want me to be at. I don't want to listen to the preacher you don't want me to listen to. My life is totally yielded to you. In this yielding, I'm almost there, you're going to have to separate me. So I must trust God to be fair and to be right to me, even when it seems like he's not. Matter of fact, talk to somebody and say, it's on God. Now, no, what I become is on God, but I must allow God. I was getting dressed this morning, and he said, tell my people to stop putting everything on me because this is a partnership and while I got my role they got their role y'all don't hear me and some things ain't gonna happen till they do what they supposed to do here it is I know I don't want to offend no Republicans in our midst if you're a Republican I don't want to offend you but I was listening there again there again we wake up this morning to another mass shooting and what do they say our thoughts and our prayers are with the and I heard somebody just say this morning with the victim. I said, well, ain't nothing you can pray for the victim. But our thoughts and our prayers are with the victim and the family. Y'all don't hear me here. And I begin to hear the Lord says to pray and not to put action is an insult to faith. And some of y'all don't even realize it. But you've been insulting your faith because you do nothing. And you just simply say, I'm going to pray about it. No, some laws have got to be changed. Y'all ain't going to help me here. Congress has got to get together and decide. I ain't going to get no help on this preach moment. That our children in school is more important than them getting a donation for their next campaign. I ain't got nobody to help me here. And so if they don't do that, then we're just going to continue to have mass shooting that you won't even be able to go to the mall without wondering, am I going to get shot up? I said all that to say, you can no longer say it is on God and you're not doing your part. He separates you from your mother's womb that you may fulfill his thought. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm just the thought of God dealing.
dealing with the process of separation that brings pleasure to him y'all ain't helping me how do I know it brings pleasure to him for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord come on y'all quote the next part and he delights that's the part y'all don't hope he delights in my next step so if my next step is fire he's singing me in fire and he's pleased my next step is the flood and he's seeing me wading in the water trying to get through this season and he's sitting in heaven pleased because the pleasure of separation is that when I go with the separation it is a sign that I trust him all I've come to do is to preach to 20 folk and say stop fighting the separation go with the flow because when you handle this thing right the thought of God is going to be executed through you and you will not fail to the ground without fulfilling everything God called you to be wave at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm not just called to do ministry but I'm called to be successful and see that's why I don't like preaching to church folk because when you say call the only thing y'all think about is a microphone no baby I'm called to be successful that everything I touch it ought to succeed. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not perish. And whatever... Y'all ain't helping my preach. I'm going to try it again. Whatever he do it shall prosper why whatever I do prosper because I go with the flow of separation I don't do nothing that he doesn't want me to do and so when I do what he wants me to do then guess what happens pleasure 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 the pleasure of separation hurry up hurry up so in this pleasure of separation, you have to also begin to understand the state of waiting. Because often he will separate you to a wilderness. He will call you out of a place, drop you in a wilderness. Y'all ain't helping me. And then give you a season of waiting and wandering. And in the wandering, the W-A-N, y'all don't hear me here. Sometimes your mind will wander, the W-O-N. The wandering will have you wondering, did I do the right thing? Okay, I'm the only one that got confused and thought my decision was the wrong decision because it didn't yield me what I thought it would when I thought it would. And if I hadn't held on to that last moment, I was about to change my decision and shift back to something that would have aborted the whole plan. But I thank God that I've learned the state of waiting. Mm. And I'm not going to let nobody push me while I wait. I ain't going to let nobody discourage me while I wait. You go ahead and get all you want to get. I'm happy for you. But I don't want nothing until it's my time. I dare you look at a neighbor and say, wait till your time. Wait. No, y'all ain't helping my preach. Find another neighbor and say, your time is coming. But enjoy the state of waiting. So Paul teaches it very plain in the text, who separates me from my mother's womb. So the act then of separation is God's will to make choice. I know you're tired of talking to your neighbor, but it's the way I preach. Tell him I'm God's choice. Ain't everybody's cup of tea, but I'm God's choice. Matter of fact, I've come to the understanding I'm not for everybody. And when you get good that you ain't for everybody, then you stop trying to be with everybody because you realize you're not for everybody. Lord, I feel God in here today. And everybody, y'all don't hear me here. When you got too many best friends, that's a statement you ain't loyal to nobody because ain't no way in the world you got 20, 30 best. 
it ain't that much of you to go around to have 20 best. Lord, help me to preach this. So the act of separation uh, is God's will to make choice of his call. So it is the idea, stay with me, stay with me. It is the doctrine of what we call the doctrine of election. Now some people get confused in the doctrine of, doctrine of election because they bring the doctrine of election to a point of feeling once picked or once saved, always saved. So we, we don't lean in that slant. Now, I, I do believe once chosen, always chosen. So I do believe you can be chosen and still be in hell. And Jonah proves my point. Jonah says, guess what? I end up in the fish belly. And he describes it as hell. Why? Go find Jesus. Jesus says, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, so must the son of man go down to hell. Y'all don't hear me here. So you can be in the wrong place with the right call because the callings of God are irrevocable. That means God does not change his mind. Okay, I'm going to get in trouble. That's why you can't be impressed by people anointing because there are people that know how to operate in their anointing but have no character. Y'all still ain't helping me here because he does not lift his choice of you. And that's why us that are anointed, we can't get so cocky with our anointing because what will happen, the day of Samson will be upon us that we will stand one day to perform. And guess what? The glory would have been lifted because we didn't respect the choice. Everybody, I'm preaching to you. You better respect the fact God chose you. You better not operate in no arrogance like you. God owes you something. Baby, I'm a humble that he picked me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I make a living by talking and in school. Y'all ain't helping me in fourth and fifth grade. I couldn't even hardly write. Y'all don't hear me talking about separate. They had to pull me out of regular class and drop me in slow class because I couldn't keep up. But look at me now. I can sit at the table with anybody. Why? So I ain't got no room to boast. I ain't got no room to get arrogant. I ain't got no room to get cocky. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you got to get it together. You've been elected by God. You've been chosen by him, not just to preach, but to be successful. Not just to be successful, but to serve. And you better find your place of service and begin to change the world and come out of your feelings and stop worrying about who like you and who going to support you because the minute you say yes Lord the money gonna start flowing the minute you say yes Lord the emails gonna start coming the minute you say yes Lord just as God looked down and elected Abram please stay with me I feel like preaching y'all he elected Abram he didn't elect Abraham. He elected Abram. He elected an idol worshiper. He elected somebody that didn't even know his name. He didn't know Jehovah. He is from a foreign land serving the gods of his father. But he says to Abram, the pleasure of my separation, leave your daddy's house. Oh, the divine nation. Stay with me. The divine, can I help you? The divine nation was in Abram. It was not in Abraham. It was in Abram. Whew. It wasn't in him when he got it together. It was in him while he was worshiping a false god. And so God said, the divine of who you are was already in you while you were jacked up and messed up. And that's why I had to keep pulling on you. You didn't get this when you got saved. It was already in you. Oh, 
I know some of y'all ain't going. It was in you while you were in the bar. It was in you while you were in the club. It was in you while you were getting high. It was in you while you were getting drunk. And that's why he kept calling you, saying the pleasure of separation is to yank you out of that lifestyle and drop you in your purpose so you can know my hand is on your life. I come to preach to you today. I don't care what your past is and who got the receipts. I could care less when God's hand is on your life. I sat Friday. Stay with me. I sat Friday in Bishop Jake's conference. And I, I missed a lot of it because I only decided to go at the last minute. And I only went Friday. And by the grace of God, I was able to get in. So I sat Friday. And I see Bishop Jakes sitting on the stage with not no one to represent this person, but sitting on the stage with the CEO and president of Wells Fargo. Not a VP, not a representative, not an ambassador, the president himself who has written Bishop Jakes, a check to take care of the whole event and who's also going in partnership to help him build communities and villages to help our people. And so I'm sitting there scratching my head because what, what grabs me the most it's not necessarily what they're saying, but what grabs me the most is who he's sitting by. How then does a man over billions of dollars sit with another man who is a Pentecostal apostolic speaking in tongues preacher? So the Holy Ghost began to tell me this, and I'll share it with you. He says, who Bishop Jakes is now is who he's always been. Hmm. He did not become this when he moved to Texas. He was this with his jerry curl slinging his hair. Get ready, get ready. No, y'all listen. You're missing my point because what you fail to understand is you are waiting to become something that you already are. At the moment that he separates you, he drops in you divine ability and it is the job of the enemy to make you doubt what God has put in you and he will surround you with people that won't believe in you. Y'all ain't helping my preach. Come on, I need somebody to talk back to me. We were reared in houses with people that didn't believe in us and they told us to sit down and shut up because they were trying to stifle our creativity. Y'all ain't helping me. We were nursed by people that couldn't see our destiny. That's why the book said, train up a child. Oh, I'm going to mess y'all up. Y'all think that means raise them in church. No, it don't. Uh-oh, I'm going to mess y'all up. They ain't got nothing to do with church. Train up a child in the way it should go has everything to do with the skill set that God has put in that child. So when you see your child and you see the signs that they're giving you, that they want to be creative. Y'all don't hear me here. Don't tell them to shut up. Just monitor what they say. Y'all ain't helping me here. They want to color out the line, let them color out the line. Because what they're trying to tell you, I'm not the one to be boxed in. I got something in me called creativity. And every time you tell them you can't do that, you bind up the creativity in them. I wish you would find a neighbor and say it ain't too late. Yes, you can do it. What does he call us to be? I got to go. I got to go. We must become channels of revelation 
That's what Paul says. He separated me that I may preach this gospel, that the Son of God may be revealed through me. And so God said, that's what you are. You are my channel of revelation. You show people how to suffer well. You show people how to handle grief and loss. You show people how to deal with the loss of a job and a breakup of a marriage. Y'all ain't helping me here. You show people how to deal with life. You reveal to the world how they're supposed to take their next step. And you around here crying because you're always going through something. But baby, you're always going through something because you're always preaching. You ain't preaching behind a desk. You preaching every time you walk. And you are a living epistle being read by men baby every time you get up and go to work and you know they are trying to get rid of you they you preaching right there every time you deal with the loss God allowed loss to hit your life and you didn't even lose yourself you found your way to channel through and folk are scratching their head saying how you dealing with may I say you preaching better than I'm preaching right now I wish you a wave at your neighbor and say preach y'all ain't helping my preacher today find another neighbor and say preach this gospel the gospel be hid it's here to them that are lost preach this gospel preach this gospel preach this gospel called you out to be holy holy ain't the length of your dress Holy ain't whether you wear makeup or not. Holy ain't even whether you go to a holiness church or not. Holy, holy, holy simply means separated. Not better, but different. Holy. And at any moment, y'all ain't helping me. At any moment, the old me is still there. And at any moment, if I allow it, it could come out. Y'all acting like the Holy Ghost and I made y'all forget how to cuss. Ain't no Holy Ghost made you forget how to cuss. What the Holy Ghost does is give you power to make a right choice. So the choice is, do I say what I want to say or do I hold my peace? If I say what I want to say, then I failed my preaching assignment. But if I hold my peace, while the inside of me may be shaking because I want to say something so bad, but I walk away and I preach a great sermon and I become a channel of revelation. And when people are wondering, how could I manage my emotions to that point not to want to get them back? Because I realize the pleasure of separation is that sometimes he's got to separate me even from behaviors that I wish I could do. set apart I'm closing because y'all ready to go I'm closing set apart God's possession that we becomes the one who show forth his praise I got to get out of this God's election to salvation is unconditional no served person no saved person can merit salvation mm-hmm mm-hmm 2 Peter 1 and 10. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Let's look at that word. I got my own the time. I promise I do. Let's look at that word diligence. Purposefully consistent, productive work ethics to accomplish the task with the willingness. Stay with this. To exhaust yourself. So you can't be, here pastor, what God wants you to be until you exhaust all of you. And if there is still, yeah, I'm looking at you, I ain't scared. It's looking back at me like that. If there is still an element of you 
you have not exhausted yourself to empty out everything. That's what that word diligent means. That I exhaust myself. I find myself dying daily. I died yesterday. Only to find out that there was another part of me still alive. So I'm going to die today. Then tomorrow something else will happen and let me know it's still some more of me alive. And I'll die tomorrow. I'll die daily. Crucify the flesh. Mortify the deeds of your flesh. Stop letting your flesh win every battle. It must now become our focus to be healthy. Please stay with me. Because what has happened, brother and sister Bond, is that we become spiritual, but we are not healthy. We speak in tongues, but we're not healthy. And I'm not just talking about healthy in our body. We have no emotional stability. Minister McCovery, I don't know how church folk can be on the roller coaster this much. Up, down, in, out. Love God this week. Don't know if he's real next week. Talk to one Muslim and now you don't know if you want to be in the faith. Just one. You have one conversation with one Muslim. Well, I don't know if this is right or wrong. Huh? Not rooted and grounded in anything. Y'all ain't liking my preach right now. Carry it by with every wind and doctrine. Heaping unto yourself, teachers, because you have itching ears. You want to hear what you want to hear. And as long as this gospel is in line with what you like, you good. But there comes a season, he say, I take pleasure in ripping you. I take pleasure in pulling you. I take pleasure in breaking your flesh. I delight that you're in the fire. Burn, baby, burn. I delight you're in the flood. What have you been separated from? Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm coming deep, I promise. What have you been separated from and then what have you been attached to? Because here's our deal again. We don't mind attachment, but we don't like abandonment. So we don't want to abandon nothing. We just want to be attached. Just attach me to the anointing, but don't let me abandon the profane. So is there any way you can get me anointed and I can still be nasty? And I come to tell you no. It's one or the other. You either do his will or you're out of his will. Y'all come out of that. Oh, I'm not in the perfect will. Well, if you ain't in the perfect will, you ain't in no will. God ain't passive. Oh, yeah, I let you get away with that. No, right, wrong, left, right, white, black, holy, unholy. Y'all ain't like in my preach now. Heaven, hell, in or out. So to support growth, to support expansion. Gilead, you got to hurry. Okay. You got to activity for progress. We can no longer allow the termination of our separation because of what we feel. And so some of us have been writing resignation letters to our separation process. And in the midst of being separated, we've been telling the process, I quit. I don't like the way this feels. I don't like who's not in my life anymore. I don't like what I can't do anymore. So I quit this process. So life 
life, it is the seed of the call to separation. The seed is the power to fulfill the promise. The seed consists of the productive part, which is covered, stay with me, by a some kind of material that protects the seed. The element of the seed is always covered. And when the seed produces, the fruit grows out and then covers the seed. Okay, because I'm going to make you mad. Because the most valuable part of this is not the fruit, it's the seed. Because the fruit, the fruit can be consumed, but the seed can be reproduced. So this is why the season, you can't eat the seed. Because if you eat the seed, it gives you no ability to have a time to reproduce. <sighs> I got to go. So the embryo, that which develops after its own kind. And when you look for more, you don't look at what you've already done. Wait, stay with Pastor. I know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm really trying. I'm only on page four, but I'm really trying. I'm, I'm really, really trying. When you look to do more for God, you don't look at what you've already done. And here's our problem. We are constantly looking at our accomplishments, thinking our accomplishments are going to empower us for future you can't do more for him by looking at what you've already done because what you've already done is done. So what you've done becomes foundation to stand on to accomplish more. And if I'm breathing, then it's more. If I survive the car accident, then it's more. If I didn't kill the joker for what he did to me, then it's more. If I'm not in jail because I didn't do it, y'all don't... Then it's more. So Paul, who is a Pharisee, a son of a Pharisee, please stay with me. Look at what he says in the text. I am so far advanced in Judaism than most of them my age. I am the Jew of the Jew. I thought I was doing God a favor because I was going around killing these people called, y'all called them Christians, but they're actually called Christ things. Because what they said was that they have the stain of Christ on them. And so it was an insult to be a believer in the cross. To be a believer in the cross meant you had a stain on you. And we modernized it and said Christian. But literally they were called there is a Christ stain. They have a stain on them because they believe in grace. Ha. And guess what? You still got a mark on you. Need to maybe go back to saying I'm Christ stained. There's a mark on me because I believe in the cross. There's a mark on me because I believe I can't work to get to heaven. I got to accept this thing called grace. Y'all ain't gonna like me here. Can't fry enough chicken to get there. Can't have enough car washes and sell enough donuts to get there. Can't pay enough tithes to get there. Y'all don't hear me. Can't sing in the choir enough to get there. Only the righteous. I ain't got nobody to help me here. Shall see God. So this Pharisee, this Paul, who now understands the component of being the pleasure of separation. He goes around and he kills the Christ thing. He kills the Christ thing because in the depth of who he is, I promise, page five, we're almost there. The depth of who he is, the depth of who he is, is he is anti-Christ. Anti-Christ, meaning anti-anointing. And when you don't, oh, 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 some of y'all talking about, I wonder if the anti-Christ is here yet. When you don't allow the separation process to work in your life, then you operate in the spirit of the Antichrist. 
Oh, I knew y'all were going to roll your eyes at me because you are anti the anointing. You are anti. Y'all ain't helping my preach the purpose of God. So when you can know the pulling of God is on your heart and you ignore it and keep doing what you want to do, you are moving in the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is anything that is against God. And I'm trying to connect with folk that's willing to say he's been too good to me for me to be against him. I'm sorry, I'm having a moment. He have brought me too far for me to be against him. Wave at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Uh, tell him, Bishop, about to wrap this up in about five minutes. Tell him, go with him, go with him this last five minutes. No, tell him, go with him, go with him this last five minutes. Tell him, and go with the process. Go with the process. So here's this group of Christians at this church in Galatia. Free people who should be walking in the liberty of Christ. Loose, but not free. Mother Arthur, nothing binding them on their feet, but they are not free. So, I should not seek bondage. So Paul writes to them, and he talks to them that you are bound in your Judaism, and your legalism, and you have allowed yourself to open the door to Gnostics and people that would talk against grace. And they will make you think you have to work. So let me go back, Paul says, to Galatians 1 and 1. Paul, that's who I am, an apostle of Jesus, not of man. I am not one of man and neither am I by man, <sighs> but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. He asserts his apostolic authority by now opposing teachers that are rising up in the church at Galatia that's coming against the doctrine of grace. And when anybody tell you you're not worthy of what God's going to do for you, they're coming against the gospel of grace. Mm. When your mind begins to talk to you, who playing for me because I got to wrap this because I feel another wind to talk and I got to go. When your mind begins to tell you you're not worthy, and your past starts talking, you begin to understand that there is this component trying to break you. I'm not wearing my separation as a badge. That's why I don't like y'all church folk. Because y'all will take the accomplishment of holiness and put it on like you got a badge. And walk around, I'm holy. I don't do what they do. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I got a problem. Y'all, y'all just said, forgive me, just tolerate. I got a problem with a church that's got to announce they are holding this church every time they have church. That's like me having to wake up every day. I'm a black man. I'm a black man. I silly does that look you know what I am by what you see and if you got to announce your holiness it ain't there people ought to know you're holy when they look at you I ain't got no help in here and that's why people would not align themselves up with us because we've taken the accomplishment of pleasing God and wear it like a trophy. But for the grace of God, there go I. I ain't got nobody to help me. Paul start calling out some stuff. He said, there's some liars here. There's some fornicators. I ain't got nobody. There's some adulterers. There's some truth breakers. There's some infeminine. Y'all don't hear me? He called the list and he said, wait before you say anything about them. As such was some of you, but grace 
found you where you were washed you off and dropped you in a thing called the ministry of reconciliation made you an ambassador of Jesus Christ called you to the ministry put a billboard on your back and everybody that see you can read this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous <laughs> They say you by my God. When you begin to understand the concept of what grace is, you don't abuse it, you don't neglect it, because you know you didn't deserve it. I wish you would look at a neighbor and wave at him and say, neighbor, I'm only here by the grace of God. That neighbor didn't want to believe it, but find you another neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, I don't even deserve to be sitting on this pew right now. But grace separated me from my mother's womb. So since I've been separated from my mother's womb, I can pick up what David said. That I was born in iniquity and in sin. I got shaped, but I thank God one day I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and I accepted him as my savior and now I've been running for my life. What then is this element of grace? It is the idea of charis. That's what it means in the Greek. In the Hebrew, it is the word hin which comes from the component of being compassionate. It is the superior to an inferior that says you don't deserve it, but I'm going to give it to you anyhow. There is no human effort or an attempt that you could do that would make me want to call you. But you were in my mind before I said let there be. See, y'all don't get it yet. Before God made heaven and earth, he thought of you. And before Adam got here, you was in the mind of God. Matter of fact, you were in Adam's loins because he's the father of all human beings. And you was in Eve's womb. And so now here you are, thousands upon thousands of years later, and the enemy of your soul is trying to make you not take pleasure in separation. Would you wave at a neighbor and just say, neighbor, not only does God take pleasure in it, but I take pleasure. I am amazed at the wondrous works of God that he could take my black dirty soul dip it in red blood and it come up white as snow and I heard the pace sister say it if God can get a brown cow to eat green grass and produce white milk surely he can save me Lord help me to preach this so the epistle wants to let us know that you cannot be hurt in this season of life because I'm separating you I'm pulling you out of comfort I'm pulling you out of familiar and I'm bringing you to a new thing for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither my ways are your ways and how you want to get there it's not how I'm taking you you want somebody to call your name and to make you great but you're gonna be great by how you handle the fire you're gonna be great how you handle the arrow you're gonna be great when you can do like David 
I say I was not hurt in the house of my enemy but I was wounded in the house of my friend but I didn't let a friend that became a Judas make me stop would you look at the neighbor and say there's a call on you and there's something on your life and you can't be offended in this season of separation come on tell somebody go with it because something good is coming out of it so the Lord begins to deal with separation he puts the difference between the old you and the new you he separated Abel y'all don't hear me by an offering he separated Enoch by a walk he separated Noah by a ship he separated Sarah by a womb that was barren he separated Moses by a burning bush he separated Rahab by a red cord he separated Jesus by a cross and I'm here to tell you today there is a pleasure in separation so dry your eyes and get yourself together and come out of your feelings and realize he knows the way that I take and when he's tried me I shall come forth as pure gold would you wave at a neighbor and say neighbor whatever you're going through now it's gonna be your ministry that neighbor don't want to believe it but find you another neighbor and say neighbor whatever life is throwing at you now it's gonna be what he used for you in the end I'm crying and I'm broken but I'm separated I'm wounded and I'm weary but I'm separated and he that has begun can I preach two minutes a good work in me he shall perform it to the day of Jesus tell somebody he called me and I got to go with it y'all ain't helping my preach tell somebody look where he brought me from where did you come from brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light ain't no shame in my game I was jacked up from the floor up I did whatever I wanted to do but I heard the voice of heaven say come out from among them and be ye separate y'all ain't helping me it didn't say separated it said separate y'all ain't helping me I got to be in it to win it y'all know y'all played a lotto why y'all getting quiet in here you got to be in it to win it and if you ain't in it you ain't gonna win and I'm here today to tell somebody get in the fight and endure hardness as a good soldier lift up your head oh ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting door and the king of glory he shall come in who is the king of glory the Lord 
strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory find you a neighbor that want to have church for the last 60 seconds pull on them and say neighbor come out that valley pledge it of separation come on pull on them and say name it you come too far to quit now why give in when you're almost there why give in that any day now it's about to break for you pleasure of separation I heard on the voice of Jesus say come unto me and rest weary one lay down thy head upon my breast and I came to Jesus just as I was I was weary wounded and sad but I found in him a resting place and he had made me glad where my Baptist member that amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found surely was blind but now I see I've been separated don't try to pull me back come on Kojic let's do our part I'm running down from my life if anybody asks you what's the matter with me tell them I'm saved sanctified Holy Ghost feel by your baptized I got Jesus on my side and I'm running for my life come too far from where I started nobody told me the road would be easier but I don't believe he brought me this far I, I'm a hang on y'all ain't helping my preach I said I, I I'm a hang on cause help is on the way you're weary but you're separated you're tired but you're separated you're frustrated but you're separated and Paul I'm sorry cause y'all looking at me like when he gonna stop I'ma stop when I stop Paul said I realize that the call is on my life to be an apostle and what I didn't do dumb I didn't talk with flesh and blood I wish you would lean on your neighbor and say neighbor if you know what's on your life why are you talking to carnal people if you got dreams in your head why are you talking to folk that don't dream if you got determination in your mind then why are you hanging with quitters if you got a will to keep on fighting then why are you dealing with folk that threw in the towel I need somebody that'll wave your hand and say I'm going with Jesus all the way Paul said it I am an apostle of Jesus Christ you didn't pick me he did y'all ain't helping me I wasted hear me brother I wasted five years of ministry in this church trying to prove to folk I was 
was called to be a pastor. I'm fine. I said five years. I went and wrestled with flesh. Y'all know what they said. They said I sleep with the men and the women. Y'all ain't liking my preach. I was hurt in my heart. I wept like a baby and then one day the Holy Ghost said why are you dealing with folk can't see and some of y'all got vision but you hang around blind people and so God said I'm about to separate you I'm about to separate you I'm about to separate you from the blind folk from the weak folk from the battered folk from the wounded folk from the weary folk pull on your name I'm sorry pull on your name for the last time and say come out of it y'all ain't talking tell them come out of it why you're still there the pleasure of separation get out of that valley they ain't worth your time they ain't worth your presence they ain't worth your energy they ain't worth your intel leave them alone and say the Lord he got something better if I can wait and hang on just a little while something good about to break for me when I count to three I need everybody that's coming out to make some steps and let the devil know I'm good with separation I'm good with being different I'm good with not fitting in I'm good with being by myself I'm good with being misunderstood I'm good Where are you at in here today? Where are you at in here today? One, two, three, let me see you Step out in faith Take you a walk said take you a walk and let the devil know pledge it pledge it you watching me at home get up out that chair walk around in your living room and say pledge of separation no I won't go back no I won't go back my God's been good to me Jesus has set me free oh no I won't go back we got to go we got five minutes and we got to turn out because y'all go home at 12 30. but when i count to three i need about 20 folk that know there's a praise in your feet you only got 60 seconds i got to pray for somebody but i need you to give a quick dance and when your neighbor say what you're dancing about tell them this is my i'm not going back dance i ain't going back I say I ain't going back. I ain't going back. They in my DM right now, but I ain't going back. They text you last night, but I ain't going back. They ask you what you're doing after church. Tell them whatever I'm doing, I ain't going back. <laughs> I just heard the Holy Ghost say if you praise me. I'll give you strength to stay out. Wait, 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 wait.
Put your hand on a neighbor and say, neighbor, this praise is about to give me strength to stay out. One, two, three, come on. You better know how to dance on command. minutes bow your heads my Bow your heads. I want you to speak prophetically to whoever you're near and just tell them that I prophesy over your life that that door to your past has been sealed forever. Hey, hey, hey. A 
as I pray with you, it's our time to go. It's our time to go. As I pray with you, I want you to understand what Paul was saying. He said, if I would have talked to people, Sister Paula, I would not be an apostle right now. Read it in the NIV. He says, if I had listened to flesh and blood, if I had listened to intel that made sense, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Huh? So God said today, I want you to understand that walking out of this door, you cannot talk with people that don't understand spiritual things. How many of y'all hear me? I conferred not. I had no conversation with carnality. Because carnality is always going to talk me out of my purpose. Carnality is going to always suggest go back to what you know. Even when what you know wasn't working, it's going to tell you, go back there because it's familiar. It's comfortable. But you've been called to be separate. And there is pleasure in this. Sister Felicia, that's what I'm trying to get over to us. It's joy in serving the Lord. We walk around acting like this is the worst thing in the world. There's pleasure in having the hand of God on your life. It's amazing not to fit in with people that ain't going nowhere. It's amazing. Bow your heads. It's amazing. It's amazing to be so confident, Kelly, in yourself that they don't have to save you a seat to feel special. It's amazing not to fall into the trap of religion and be like other people that come to church and need all of this fluff because they're not important nowhere else. It's amazing to walk out of this door and matter somewhere else. And when you matter somewhere else, you don't fight to be noticed in here. Because you understand all this is, is to give me power to deal with out there. I ain't coming here to fight you. I came to get some strength. So I can fulfill this thing called being separate. By the grace of God, I had got a great space Friday. They found me a great deal and, you know, got me in a certain section. But y'all know me, I'm like, I ain't going up there. First of all, I don't like attention. I say, session's already in. I'm going to have to walk all by these people. And as much as I'm in front of people, I do not like attention. So I'm sitting in the back all the way. All the way. And everybody kept like, what you doing back here? I said, because the seat was free. I mean, it was open and I could sit here. Y'all don't hear me. Because when you don't need that, And then when you don't need it, Dr. Carla, almost when you got to do it, it almost becomes uncomfortable because you don't need it. And those are the people, hear me as I pray, those are the people that's going to be promoted in the next season. As I pray with you, the founder of our organization, Church of God in Christ, Bishop C.H. Mason, and I say this story all the time went to someone's house back in the 60s to have dinner. Being the head of the church, of course, they wanted him to sit in the premier spot. 
And they had him at a space for him at the head of the table, and he would not move, the story says. The story says he sat wherever on the side of the table, and they kept saying, come on, Dad, sit up here, sit up here. We've got this chair special for you. You're the head. You're the head. And the wisdom of Bishop Mason said this, well, if I am the head, then wherever I sit becomes the head table. So can I tell you, wherever you sit, woo, turns into the head spot because he's made you the head and not the tail. So they ain't got to make room for you. Whenever you get there, y'all don't hear me here, your seat will be a seat of honor. Bow your heads if you don't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sins and not understanding. Walking into the call of your separation, I want you to come down. And if you don't want to come down, that's fine. Find somebody near you and just say, pray with me because I want to be saved. You're a backslider. You need to be reclaimed. You want to come down? Fine. If not, there's believers all over this house. There's hundreds of people in this room right now. And all over this house, somebody can pray with you right where you are. But for the next 30 seconds, six minutes over my time, the next 30 seconds, I want you to pray for everybody on your road that they will become okay with the process of separation. I am your pastor and I will not negate my responsibility of being your pastor. The altar is always open. For those that would say, Pastor, would you just anoint me with oil or pray for me? There's a special need that I have. And I want my pastor to just agree with me. I will not negate my responsibility to shepherd you. That's you. I want you to come. And everybody else, I want you to begin to pray. Somebody will get the oil for me. I want you to pray. Hallelujah. The Lord knows all things. I say the Lord knows all things. 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 I say the Lord knows all things. Hallelujah. you're at your seat, I want you to begin to labor in prayer. I want you to begin to labor in prayer. I want you to labor in prayer for these that are at the altar, and I want you to labor in prayer for those that are at their seat. That the strength of God would step and help. Come on, say it. Step up and help, Lord. Step up. And... Uh... When I come to three, can I hear Zion travail? I'm not going to be long. Just stay with me. Come on, can you travail with me, Zion? That there would be a truly a moment of deliverance for these on the altar and even for those that are at their seat. That the help of God would be with us. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I got intercessors here and I really need you to help me push in this last moment. Come on. One, two, three, where you're at, begin to pray all over the house. Father, I thank you for this God moment and this God time and for what you have ordained from the foundation of the world. Father, you know the needs of these, your people that came to the altar. And Father, I ask in Jesus' name that not one of them would go back the way they came, whether it is in their mind, in their body, in their family, in their finances in their health, in their wealth, what is going on in their world in this moment. Father, use this moment to minister to them. Minister strength and minister help. Hallelujah. Minister endurance. We call the spirit of endurance to fall upon each of them today. And Father, even us that are at our seat, as we pray one for another, as we travail, as we fight in the spirit, Hey, Lord. 
touch and agree with you. As I touch and agree with you, the help of the Lord be with you today. The strength of the Almighty be upon you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Hashiata mama mama mama. Hey. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mother Abba, would you pray?
Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord, I lift up Sister Shay Shay before you. I decree and declare healing in that body now. Remember Sister Shay Shay, Lord. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, we declare healing. You know somebody that needs a miracle for healing, call their name out right now. Healing is in the atmosphere, call their name out right now. Saints, I don't say this as a rebuke. I say it as an encouragement. I will never, ever waste your time. I will never, ever waste your time. But when we come into the house of God, I, I want us to grow back to a place. The old Bethlehem Judah, we were not a time conscious church. And we saw God do great and mighty things because we did not constrain him to a time. And I feel your spirits when they get a certain time, your whole spirit shift because you're ready to go. And all you're going to do is go relax and go eat and go meet friends. I promise I will not waste your time, but I do not want to rush God's time. If people can be walking in a mall and lose their life, we need to stay in the glory as long as the glory is here. I promise you, I'm not going to have you here four and five hours, but I want you to grow back to that place that when you walk through the door, whether I'm here or not, just let God have his way. People are on the altar, and I know some of these stories. People are dealing with mental anxiety. People are fighting for people in their families. Death threats are over people, family members, because of sickness. And when they come to the altar, they need us to fight with them because they want their family members to live. They don't need us to check out because the dance is over. And some of y'all, when the praise is over, y'all check out in your mind. But no, we got to be a house of deliverance that people can get help. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands as we prepare to leave, but just worship him for what he has done and what he is doing. Come on. That's it. Seal it with worship. Hallelujah. I thank you for I thank you for separating this house, making this house what you would have it to be. And we thank you for it. I believe our dear Deacon Emery and Mother Emery, as we go, we want to pray and bless you today. Stand on your feet, everybody. This is our dismissal. Thank you, Mother Arthur, for always being so pointed to help. Let the Lord minister to them that's on the floor. Don't worry about it. Let them stay there as long as God want them there. Amen. And we're praying for a 